Hey, and welcome to the latest episode of Startup Chuck. Today we're going to talk about prototyping. Basically, how do you make the idea or product in your head? If it isn't already something that you could just buy off the shelf, that is. So, uh, with that in mind, let's first talk about our sponsor. Our sponsor today is Chuck Rack, manufacturers of the Chuck Bucket. And... Uh, it's great because we're actually going to talk a little bit about prototyping of this as well. It's a hitch mount ski rack that fits on the back of your car, also takes bikes. But that in mind, let's initially start with um, what, what do you do when you want to make a prototype? Of course, everybody wants it to look like the final product at some point, right? But that's unlikely at the beginning. So the right mindset is to think about at least i like to think about my favorite subreddit or one of them which is uh shitty robots and so shitty robots is a subreddit where people go and make basically prototypes of different projects and it is just things duct taped to things to make them work uh here's a Pencil sharpening robot, right? Nothing super fancy. Um, but everything you see, right? Duct tape. Hot glue. Nothing special to make something work. And uh, you don't... Legos. Great example. So you don't need a lot in order for you to like make your prototype work. You don't have to have a machine shop necessarily and you can get away with a lot. So for example, for the chuck bucket, I had five, six prototypes prior to getting it to the market. And so the first one was a five gallon Home Depot bucket strapped to a bike rack on the back of the car. And then the next prototype was this plastic bucket put on the back of a car with if you could see, it's got a section where you can slide the bucket into, and it was meant to be easily replaceable uh, because plastic wasn't going to last in the winter, right? So, of course, that wasn't the final version I had. So eventually I went to what I like, uh, my favorite website for uh, laser cutting. Well, first I designed it up in CAD, where's laser cutting site. There we go. Oshkut. Oshkut is a laser cutting and sheet metal bending house. And so I went into SolidWorks and this isn't the bucket. This is going to be my uh, banana bobber that I had worked on. But, you know, essentially you design up your part and then from there you make a drawing and then you send it to a shop if you need to, a 3D print house, for example. Uh, you could do that if you don't have your own 3D print house. Um, material I like would be uh, typically laser centered nylon is usually really cheap and strong. And there's a whole bunch of online quick turn 3D printing shops, but it's actually really cheap to get your own 3D printers. For example, you go into Amazon and all these printers are between $400 and $400. Uh, even if you want to get into resin ones, which have much higher resolution, but aren't as durable of a part, you're looking at $500 um, to get into that. And these will all make small parts. And even if you want to do circuit boards, you can get custom circuit boards designed cheap. If what you're trying to do is software, um, software is essentially, you know, fairly inexpensive because it's mainly your time. I, for example, programmed an app uh, for Android and it was terrible. I mean, it was just spaghetti code, but that's kind of it. If you care enough about what you're trying to make, then you will find a way to make it. Uh, assuming that the technical challenge, you know, isn't too hard. Again, you're not going to make a time machine because Technical challenges are extremely difficult there, right? But you could probably make 
a toaster that burns images into the toast with a laser or something like that. That wouldn't be incredibly outside of the range of somebody having to learn the skills necessary to do that or find someone with the skills. So the first thing I'd say is you have to be committed to putting in the effort to try and do it yourself or finding people who can help you do it. So if, let's say you have an idea, but you're not an engineer. Well, you could probably find an engineer or find somebody else who is very interested in that idea, shares the same interest as you, thinks it will be successful, and will put the time in, and then you guys can split equity in some way or another. If you can't convince anybody that uh, has the skills you need to work on your project, then chances are maybe the product isn't going to be great. Um, it's a good way to weed out whether or not what you're trying to produce and sell is going to become a good product. A lot of people get caught up with wanting all the equity, not wanting to share it. And I'll just say you can, you can own a little bit of a big company or you can own a lot of a failure of a company by not ever having anything actually made. So sharing equity is not a bad thing especially if it gets your prototype made, uh, especially if it gets your product sold. So sharing it with salespeople instead. But we'll get into all that sort of other stuff in a different episode in terms of building a team. But in terms of just getting your prototype made, you also have other options out there. So um, if you're doing coding, AI is great. ChatGPT is actually really good. Um, here's an example of you could write some bad code and it basically will talk you through the different parts of it. Um, you can have it rough out code for you. Say, uh, I want some code that is in uh, Java that will do a loop where it indexes between one and 10 and then it'll spit all those things out. And then you can basically keep using that and learn from it really save you a ton of time. Um, another big thing you could do is college students. And college students are a great resource. I actually have two college students that do my marketing. And uh, roughing out, oh, not even roughing out, they made the website great. They did photo shoots. And you might say, was that prototyping? Well, it is if you're trying to develop anything, right? So any aspect of your company that needs to get done, if you're trying to get it done and it's not a final version, then it's basically a prototype. So college students are great, they're cheap, they're trying to build portfolios for working at a better company long term, and chances are you can probably interest one of those to help you out uh, in between their classes and whatnot. If you don't know how to find college students and don't wanna just be a weird person on a campus, you can go talk to professors and they might be able to help you as well in terms of pointing out which students they think are good in their studies and might be able to help you with that. But usually a friends and family network is, is helpful as well. Uh, another last resort for trying to get prototypes done, especially in fields that you aren't necessarily good at, is a website called Fiverr. And Fiverr is great because let's say you need somebody to help you with PCB layout for a circuit board. You can go on there and find somebody who could probably get you a basic design of what you're looking at for less than $300. Now, now you look at this and you say, okay, these say through $30, right? Or $90. Well, as you go through Fiverr, you're gonna realize like, oh, it's kind of a tiered system. So they might draw a basic schematic up for $30 or if you need them to do prototyping, it's gonna cost a bit more, right? Like, oh, I need someone to do this or that. But in general, they're usually willing to work cheap. They usually have a fair amount of people who have rated them, so you know whether or not they're gonna do the job or not. You can see previous work they've done. And it's a great way to at least get started with it. Um, let's see here. So sewing textiles, things like that. 
If you want to get into textiles and you don't know how to sew, you can hot glue fabrics together, tape them together, super glue. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. And then once you get something that you kind of like using glue and the fabric and scissors and whatnot, then you can go to uh, fabric cutters and, and seamstresses and things like that and have them prototype up the uh, fabric and um, clothing for you or a backpack or whatever you're working on. So that's, I mean, kind of it for prototyping. There is CAD out there. You can learn for 3D modeling. There's free CAD. There is paid software like SolidWorks, uh, Solid Edge. Uh, but there is also um, another site, the name escapes me right now, which has free online CAD software. It's called Onshape. And basically, Onshape is great because it's free uh, as long as you don't mind it being public. And so, again, chances are nobody's probably trying to steal your stuff, but at least you can learn in Onshape and figure out how to make things and then decide if doing a paid tier is worth it. But for a lot of prototypes that you may be doing, if you name them something arbitrary, chances are nobody will ever actually find what you're working on, and so then it doesn't really matter too much. So Onshape's a great one. And then I had mentioned uh, Solid Edge if you join EAA, which is the Experimental Aircraft Association of America, you can get a student version of Solid Edge for free, which is also really good. But uh, FreeCAD and SketchUp and all those other things are other options for making 3D models, but I'm not super familiar with those. You'd have to go figure them out on your own. So that's all I've got for learning how to prototype. There's not a lot really other than just get your hands dirty and start making things or try and find some people who are willing to join your adventure. So if you thought this episode was good, please like and subscribe. And if not, then I will see you all later.